Good morning, everyone. Today is Friday, April 12th. I'm Caitlin Francis. Avello Airlines is now responding after passengers on one of its flights say they were stuck on a plane for hours following a diversion to Bradley International Airport in Windsor Locks. Avello Flight 434 was heading home from Nashville, set to land at Tweed, New Haven early this morning. However, weather conditions made it hard for the pilot to see that runway. And after trying to land twice in New Haven, that pilot flew up to Bradley International Airport. At that point, Avello says, quote, all gates at Bradley were occupied, leading to a longer wait time to get stairs for the passengers to exit the plane. And that Avello has, quote, communicated with all customers affected and will reimburse for reasonable ground transportation expenses from Hartford to their final destination, end quote. All right, Scott, let's get a check on that wild forecast. Yeah, look at this uh, Middletown ICAM. Not looking too particularly good out there. First alert this morning for more rain. We're getting nope. anywhere from one to two inches, Kate. Yeah. N not particularly good. No, uh, not good. And we're also dealing with some power outages. Power outages across mm -hmm. the state this morning in the thousands. So uh, ho hopefully you're watching us on the app this morning. Winds gusting in excess of 45 miles an hour. We have two gusts out there right now to 46 miles an hour. That's pretty important. Traveling this morning is going to prove to be problematic and poor drainage flooding also on the table. We've got some lightning strikes out there for you in parts of northeast and southeast Connecticut. You can see our first alert live radar just jamming with color, particularly up here in Torrington. No lightning in this little cluster, which is good news. But as you can see in Wyndham, there were lightning strikes. Here are some old lightning strikes between Wyndham and Norwich. So uh, they seem to be calming down a bit. But nonetheless, if you give this an hour or so, you're going to be doing much better than you are right now. All right, satellite and radar confirms. A lot of this is jogging to the north and to the east. So we're watching this. This is going to bypass us. We still have some showers hours down to the uh, south and that is going to be making its way through Connecticut. So over the course of the next two to three hours, we're going to be dealing with rain. And as we widen out the shot, we're going to be dealing with a little bit of a lull around 10 o'clock through about noon, one o'clock. We're going to get dry conditions and it's not going to be perfect, but it'll be dry. And then more showers are going to push into the state between one and three. And then we'll start to get the partial clearing in here. Visibility, not great this morning. It was doing better, but since that heavy rain has rolled in, three and three quarters of a mile, two and a quarter of a mile up in parts of northeast corner, uh, the northeast corner of the state, Chester at two miles. All right, pollen today, it's better because all the pollen's getting washed out of the atmosphere. But Saturday, we start to go moderate to high and then high on Sunday with mainly dry conditions. Chance for a shower on Sunday evening. All right, Almanac, 37 is the typical overnight low. <laughs> 37, it's 64 right now at Bradley. At Brainerd, it's 64. A little bit cooler along the shoreline. Look at the arrows coming out of the south. That wind is ferocious this morning, but the temperatures are incredibly mild. It's balmy. It's tropical out there this morning. And the 24-hour change, we are up anywhere from 6 to 14 degrees better than yesterday. Here are the sustained winds. 35-mile-an-hour sustained wind in Groton. That is remarkable. Let's check. Oh, 49 now. 49 mile an hour wind gusts in Groton. That's impressive. We start, you know, when you get to the 50 to 55 mile an hour range, we start to see some damage. And we're approaching that threshold in parts of the shoreline where the wind advisory is in effect. So please be careful out there. Future cast, again, it's going to wind down. Then we get another little burst of energy around 2 p.m. That quickly moves out and partial clearing by 6 p.m. Tomorrow for the parade, we're talking about some isolated showers. Bring an umbrella with you. I don't think you're going to need it most of the time. It's going to be cool and breezy. Overnight lows tonight in the low 40s. Again, cool and breezy tomorrow. 55, not bad, a little bit below average but with mostly cloudy skies. A shower late on Sunday and then the rest of the forecast, we start moderating the temperatures with shower chances returning Wednesday and Thursday. That's a check of your first alert forecast. Kate, good morning. All right, good morning, Scott. One person is in the hospital this morning after being seriously hurt by a driver who ran them over in Bristol last night. Now, police say someone ran over that victim on Pine Street and then took off before crashing down the street on Route 72. Officers arrested the driver, but they have not shared that person's identity yet. We'll bring you an update when we learn more. 
Branford school officials say grief counseling will be available at Branford High School today starting at 10 o'clock after a 17-year-old student was killed in a car crash late Wednesday night. Police say Isabella Os Osler, a senior, was on I-91 southbound near exit 7 riding in a car that collided with another. Now we're told a teenager from Hamden is also seriously injured. We'll bring an update when we learn more about that person's condition. In Meriden, there is a growing memorial for a little boy following his tragic death after a go-kart crash. On Tuesday night, we brought you the story's breaking news that six-year-old boy named Adrian crashed his go-kart into a gate at Cronenberger Park. He died after sustaining a traumatic brain injury, and a GoFundMe has already raised more than $25,000 for the family, and Ileano's Pizza Shop is matching every donation made there until the 25th. A candlelight vigil also planned for tomorrow. To happening on the town green in Meriden at 6 o'clock. Police have arrested a man accused of a deadly shooting right outside the courthouse in Waterbury. 29-year-old Dante Howell is charged with murder after his arrest in Middlefield. Police say he shot and killed 26-year-old Jerron Chapman just as Chapman was leaving a hearing at the courthouse last month. Still not clear why police believe Howell did this, but we are told more arrests are expected. The New Haven Fire Department is honoring one of its fallen heroes by naming a street after him. Ricardo Torres Jr. was assigned to the firehouse on Gough Street before he died while fighting a fire on Valley Street back in May of 2021. Now the department plans to rename the street corner in front of his former firehouse to Ricardo Torres Jr. Way. The fire department is also expected to hold a formal ceremony soon to mark the third anniversary of Torres Jr.'s death. Time is now 7.06. Husky Mania taking over the capital city tomorrow. Starting at 11 o'clock, the UConn men's basketball team is stepping off right from the state capitol building in Hartford. Now, you might remember last year's victory parade for the Huskies as well. We're pretty used to them winning around here, but it's still a big feat to snag back-to-back -back championships. With tomorrow's victory parade, plus a Yard Goats game and Cirque du Soleil in town and the home show right at the XL Center, officials are reminding you, plan ahead for parking. Laz Parking says it has about 10,000 spots within the city and it's $5 a spot. Don't forget, you can join Channel 3's Eric Parker and myself, as well as Luke Hydash and Unqua Asonia, who will be reporting tomorrow morning starting at 11 o'clock for live team coverage if you can't make it to downtown Hartford. All right, thanks again for joining us here this morning. Remember, you can get your news and weather updates anytime on the WFSP app. Have a great day and a wonderful weekend. Hope to see you tomorrow in Hartford.